What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. We are here at Swift Powder Coat. It is a little bit loud inside, but it is official guys. Our gate is ready and I'm so excited to see this thing. Let's go see if we can find it. It's around here somewhere. Guys are busy, look at that. We got a bunch of beadlock rings. These are pretty sick, it's kind of a sparkly gray. Those look good. We got some white or these silver. These are silver. So we've got a bunch of railing. We've got a pretty sweet clock face right there. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It is super loud in here. They're doing a bunch of sandblasting. All righty, y'all. Here is the gate. All nice and powder coated. Now the guys over at Swift convinced me to not go with a gloss, to go with more of a satin. Reason being is it'll show less scratches. Everything's gonna show scratches, right? But this just show less scratches. And Wow, this thing just looks super sick in black. Very, very happy with it. The corners look good, everything welded up good. I did notice where I added my little extension piece, you do see it get a little bit wonky. This is kind of what I talked about, powder coat not hiding everything. You can see there's a little hole right there that I didn't fill. And then if you get it in the right sunlight, you can kind of kind of see a little bit of deflection there, but it's not too bad. All righty, guys, we are pretty, pretty decently strapped out. Not just tighter over here. All right, to the ranch we go. All righty, y'all. We are ready to finally install the gate. There's a ton of stuff that needs to go on the gate, though, before we get installed. Obviously, the track system that I showed you guys previously, which is these boogers here. If you saw in the previous video, the track that comes with the actual gate motor is in one foot sections, which sucks. Um, and they only give you 13 feet. So I ordered two extension pieces. And the cool thing about the extension pieces is they actually come in three foot sections instead of a bunch of one foot sections we need to connect together. Now it's not that bad once they're connected together. These are three one foot sections. They're pretty solidly together. However, I do wish it just came as one long piece, but I get it. They wanted to store it all in one small box or ship it all in one small box, I should say. Now I think I might actually be one section short. Uh, we might have, let's see, 13 plus six, we might be 19 feet and we need to be like 20, 21 feet. If we have to add a piece or two on later, is what it is, so be it. Here is the gate motor and the riser that I built for it. Nothing special, just some uh, steel that I had lying around. That is all, what is that? It's almost half inch steel uh, flat bar, top and bottom, and then just used some two by three eighth inch wall as the risers. I mean, this thing is super, super stout. We're going to be redheading it into the concrete, same as the track. Uh, redhead, wedge anchor, whatever you want to call them. We don't really know where this goes yet, though. So it's all going to be kind of a guessing game and doing a little bit of finagling. Obviously, in my bolt holes, there is no play. However, in the bottom or the underside, well, I guess you're not going to see it unless I take this cover off, but in the actual plate that's on the bottom of the motor, it does have play forward and back. So we'll get it really close, and then we'll have to fine tune it to wherever it likes to grab those tracks that are gonna be on the actual gate. I also went ahead and made a little plan to the gate rollers or the gate guide rollers. These are what holds the gate up and basically keeps it aligned as it rolls down the track. I had originally bought rollers that I was gonna weld to some type of post, but there's a lot of variables here without building it on site. I didn't wanna just guess and it not work. So I ended up buying this on Amazon for 60 bucks. It's got a ton of adjustability. And I believe we're gonna end up either going right here or we're gonna mount it somewhere off of this post. Now going into wood is not like my favorite thing. However, this post we concreted around because we knew this one was gonna be very important. So really the only thing that's gonna fail is the actual screws being screwed into the wood. At some point, obviously that'll give out, but I think we should get a few years out of it like this. And then we'll reevaluate and we'll build a different setup later. But this will just get us rolling right now. Now, before we permanently attach anything, we've gone ahead and set the gate in place. And I gotta say, she looks freaking awesome I'm so excited for this i freaking love it the one thing so far that i have forgot well not forgot i just should have checked is these gate guide rollers they don't come with the hardware to attach it to anything i'm assuming because they don't really know what you're attaching it to so they don't really send anything however um, lag bolts would have been nice so we're trying to scavenge something worst case scenario we'll just double up uh just a regular screw in there to hold it for now and i can go pick up some lag bolts later today the other thing i was worried about once i started looking at this thing was i was like oh crap i might have made my little pedestal down there too tall because while we do have like an inch of play on this uh, track system, I didn't want it to stick up because I thought that would look very goofy if it stuck up. You'd see the backside as you were driving up. That's just no bueno. But I went and put it in place and gotta say our height is great. Look at that. Let's see. That's that's about level right there. I think we're gonna be just fine. Not gonna be pretty, but this is our temporary setup for now. Right there, and just keep it above it. Good for 
know. That'll hold it. Yeah, ain't going nowhere. Okay, give me the level, because I moved the track. So about where you want to see there. I'm coming in hot on that powder coat. That's uh I'm scratching. What? Some motherfucker put a big old thing in it. Thing? Oh, it's a big ass scratch. Must have been them loading it. Sweet snap-on free wrench that came with it. Uh it's called a dick hung. I don't know how they expect you to tighten this when the whole thing spins. Oh. Nope. All right, in the front and center. Oh, down below too. Oh, they got you down below? Yep. And that one's right in the freaking center. Alright. We'll just have to roll this everywhere. That don't tell us anything. So we've run a string line between the two to make sure that these two 20 foot sections of track are in line and one's not kind of cockeyed. The gate would make it work. It would still work if it was a little bit out of whack, but we want as nice and smooth moving as we can get. That way there's no stress on the motor and nothing kind of gets weird and binds up. Now that we've got that dialed in and marked where it goes, Alvarado's opening up the redheads. Now, typically this is the redhead I'm used to where we use these on the carport project. You guys probably saw us. They are concrete wedge anchors. You drill out with your roto hammer, pound them into place, and then you tighten down with a nut on top. However, when you go to the quarter inch, they don't make them with a nut on top. The smallest they make is 5 16 We got these ones. Basically, you just hit them with a hammer. That spreads the bottom part, and that's what locks it into the concrete. I feel like these are actually probably better than having a nut and a bolt sticking out the top for tires and stuff driving over them. However, they're kind of permanent once they're in. So I'll go ahead and drill. Locked in. That's it. It's got a little flared tip on the end there. I'll hit it with the grinder and get that transition perfect. I'm not gonna do every hole. There's like 8 million holes in them. Okay, we've got both ends of both track pieces pinned in place. I'm not gonna fill every single one of these holes with the redhead. It's just a ridiculous amount. They are every single foot. I mean, maybe if this was like a 10,000 pound gate, maybe. But I think what I'm gonna do is about every other one. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna go there, there. That should be more than enough to hold this in place. I don't know if you guys saw earlier when I was looking over, but there are two big chips out of this thing. This one's really bad. Uh, looks like when they were loading it, I'm assuming onto the pallet. Unfortunately, this side was facing down, so when I picked it up at Swift, I didn't see that. I don't think it's worth taking back. It just sucks because it's like dead. Well, maybe not dead center of the gate, but it's pretty close to center of the gate, and it's the outside facing side. So I'm gonna have to touch it up somehow, some way, just mainly so it doesn't rust. Nothing's gonna be able to match. It's powder coat, it's not paint. But uh, yeah, that's kind of disappointing because that, that doesn't look good. So story of our life, guys. These holes line up exactly on the joint in between the two pores. And you can kind of see how this was designed. I probably should have made this bottom plate wider so we can actually drill these in outside of here. But for now, we're just gonna mark them, drill them, set our redheads, and then set these over top of the bolts. Made a custom mini pencil we can get in there and mark it pick her up let's see how we did there we go hey we got it kind of mm -hmm. so with these 5 16 redheads they really give you like zero threaded portion sticking up through whereas on the longer ones you've got significantly more so we're gonna have to kind of halfway pound these in just enough to where we can get that on top and then try to finish pounding them in might just go down like that it's going okay almost lost the washer well y'all when we went to take the nut off well the nut kind of fell off when it got pounded because we just barely had it on there and this little threaded rod section is super loose in there and it just dropped below uh, where we need it and we can't really pull it back up so we might uh sacrifice this one 
We got extras since we're not gonna be able to really get these ones in. Hey! You got it. A little bit of American ingenuity right there. Oh, oh son of a... I go for one more there, always. We could probably pound this back down. It's always going for that last little bit of tightness. She went. Alrighty. Ended up getting her fixed. We had to make a custom one to fit in there. Should hold. Again, we've only got two out of the four anchors in. We'll see, we'll see. If, if anything gets weird, we can always make some like offset bracket or something for those other pieces, but I think we're gonna be all right. Now you'll see when we have the track in place, we are a little close to the motor. A little close for comfort. I'd like the motor to be a little further away. Good news is, and the reason I didn't like actually wallow out these holes in the bracket I made is because this bracket has plenty of room to slide either direction that we need. I'll probably just leave these loose for now until we... Now you want to do this in the middle. Just go to hit in the middle. Just go a little bit right there at the end. That's good. That's it. All right, you guys, now it is time to put the rack system onto the gate. They give you very large self tappers. Look at those monsters right there. Those aren't gonna be fun to keep straight and keep them from skipping all around. I know they've got a point on them, but it's not very sharp. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna pre-drill with an eighth inch drill bit. Um, that'll still leave enough for these to dig through and start to go in, but I should be able to more precisely pierce the gate with this versus trying to get this in a straight shot. Now, per the instructions, you don't want this actually fully resting on the gear. You wanna keep it just up a hair. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to keep this perfect, but the good thing is these have plenty of adjustability. So once we get them on, we'll cycle the gate a few times. We'll probably have to adjust uh, a few of these, but we'll do our best to kind of keep them where they need to be. Now with this key, we can actually unlock the gear mechanism. So we should be able to free spinner, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't free spinner. I don't think so. Move it. Nope. That's right. Try again. Nope. Uh, we gotta open this. There we go. Try that. Now we're free spinning. Now originally I was gonna put these on before we moved it off the trailer, uh, cause it's a lot easier than getting it down here. Being that they're on the bottom side, you can't really see what you're doing, so you have to lay down. But she's in place now. I don't really wanna pull the whole gate off, carry it all the way back over there. We'll just struggle for a little bit getting these on. But So basically we're just flushing it out with the top of this top rail, and it seems to be Right where we want to go. If you can get up. Can I go up? Oh, I don't want to go up anymore because it's got to come out. You can come out. I got it. Oh, it almost killed us. Yep. Pull your side out. Yep. We'll need to put a stop on the track or something. Now that we've got the track all installed and somewhat adjusted, actually we still need to come down on this side a little bit. We're now putting in our magnets and this is basically what tells it to stop when the gate is fully closed, when the gate is fully open. So we've got a south magnet and a north magnet. The south magnet is basically the closed side. So that's gonna go right there. It needs to line up Oof, we're gonna be kind of close there. Real close once this cover goes on. Oh, maybe this bracket flips around. That's probably what it is. 
got the bracket on backwards. But this right here is kind of the receiver switch. When the magnet passes this, it tells the motor to stop. So that'll tell it to stop when it's closed. So we pushed it exactly where we want her when she is fully closed. Then we're gonna set that in place, screw it down to the track. So now these go on just using set screws that basically keep tension up against this. They don't actually screw into the plastic. Uh, they couldn't make it spread. They screwed us. Go back that on it or you up on that lip? No, well, that's on it. Now you guys can see we ran about eh, 10 inches short or so of track, but it actually kind of works out perfect because that's about, well, I guess that's where we're going to open to anyway. Uh, we could try to order one more piece. I don't think you can order the small ones. Maybe if we contact them, we could, but I feel like that's open pretty good. We got about 19 feet of open, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Now we got to figure out wiring. I don't have my batteries here. They're supposed to show up at some point later today. So for now, for testing purposes, we're just going to hook this up to uh, 120, which this thing will work as both. So you can either run it as 120 and you can use the solar as a battery backup system. Or you can use it as 120 full time or you can use it as strictly solar and battery, which is what we're going to end up doing. But for now, we can just run an extension cord. They give us our pigtail here to wire up to plug in. So let me peruse the instructions and hopefully this is pretty simple. The solar stuff, I'm not gonna say it looks super complicated, but it's, you know, I start to go cross-eyed. We start looking at instructions like this. N and PE, respectively. Power cord is not included in the package. Huh. And then what is this? So times are tough. I don't really have a tiny screwdriver for that. I searched everywhere, so we're just you know, knife tightening it for now. This should be tight enough for what we're doing. Okay guys, well we're just gonna go for it. I've been reading the instructions. There's a bunch of little dip switches, which are all of these guys right here, and they correspond to these. And by pressing or turning these on and off, you can basically adjust functions. Like it's got a midway mode. If you press button B on the remote, even though these buttons are not labeled, uh, you can get this thing to where like it only opens halfway and then closes halfway. Assuming if you got like a small car, motorcycle, if or if you're trying to walk through the gate, it's actually kind of cool. Donkeys, donkeys. Or, well, no, we don't want donkeys in. But it might be cool if you're trying to get out of the gate and the donkeys are around, it'll close quicker because instead of doing a full open and close cycle, it'll just open a little bit. One of the other things a lot of people were concerned about is a soft start and a soft close. Don't worry, this thing has soft start and soft close built in. So it's not slamming your gate or like coming to a halt really fast. So we should be good. We got power. Yep, I see a light on here. All right, plug in action. We've got a beep. We've got a power. I right, we should probably put this back into play. I don't know what happens. Do we just push a button? Let's probably have gotten to that far. Test the reversing sensitivity. How to program or erase a remote. We don't need that. Hopefully these are programmed. Maybe we need to program these. We might have to program it. Let's see if we press a button. Oh, no. Oh, oh jeez. Well, hopefully it stops. We'll find out. Yeah, get ready. Get ready to unplug it if it doesn't stop. Wait for it. Doesn't like that. We might need to bring that this way more for the soft close, maybe. Now, the reason I went this over a chain is because it's much, much quieter than them old rickety chains, especially once the chains start to get worn out. Right, let's see if she stops. Nope. Oh, 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 oh. I don't, I don't like why I did that. If I press the button again. All right, she'll stop. All right, something was a little weird there. All right, so she's fighting us a little bit in terms of stopping where she's supposed to. So she's supposed to stop when this magnet passes over this part right here. And she's getting past it before it stops. So I wonder if it's just not in the right position. So we're gonna lower it down a little bit. The rear one seems to be working good. She also does not seem to be soft starting. There's three dip switches that adjust the soft start. So I'm gonna play with those a little bit in a second, but it just seems like she's very abrupt on the start and stop, which is what we don't want because that causes the gate to chatter. All right, let's see now if lowering that makes a difference. We'll go for a little open. <laughs> we gotta stay at the ready because she's gone rogue on us a couple of times. 
I moved this one a little further that way so she shuts off sooner. There we go. Which puts it, I mean, now it worked perfect. Let's see on the open. This one's been giving us less issues than that one. So here's to hoping. We actually had to come all the way back off the track before. Thankfully we caught it. Good news is without the gears going all the way to the end, if it comes off the track, should something happen and nobody's standing here, those rollers will catch it. All right, well, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why it's so jumpy when it stops, but I guess it's the momentum. Fine, adjust the stop start. Dip switch five on is three seconds. Doing what we think soft start is, because let's see if, if dip switch three is on, it's one second. Dip switch four is on, it's two seconds, but if you combine them, all right, let's go. That doesn't even look on. I don't know what seven is. What's number seven? 60 seconds, auto close. Whatever, we'll just leave that there. All right, I turned them all on. I will say, surprisingly, the gate is pretty quick for being 20 feet that need to get open. Oh, those little washers they give you look horrible. I hope we're gonna have to paint those black. Oh, oh, she just did that on her own. That's not good. I did not push the button. It decided to uh, reopen itself. Let's see if she's gone rogue on us. I had a feeling the worst part of all of this was gonna be programming this stupid thing. See, she's not soft stopping. She's soft starting, not soft stopping. And look, now we went past the magnet this time. I don't know why it opened itself back up. The last thing we want this thing to do is open itself back up. And all of a sudden the donkeys are in here. We got this place fully landscaped and nobody's home and the thing just randomly opens itself and then we just lose, you know, $50,000 worth of plants. I don't know why it keeps opening itself back up like that. Okay, we're getting a little closer. So we've got soft start dialed in. Now she opens all the way and you'll see her start to slow down when she closes. Oh, oh, now it's doing it. <laughs> this thing makes no sense. All right, so now it's on soft slow or soft stop, I should say. So you can see how much it slowed down and I believe I can adjust that time frame. So we're good, now she's fully open. In about 30 seconds here, it'll start to fully close itself. And then you'll see it'll get up to speed and probably about by here it slows down. And again, this is solely time-based. I don't think it really knows where it's at in between the two sensors. Um, so I wonder if it's just the amount of time it runs before it slows back down, or is that the amount of time it slows down before it hits the sensor? Maybe it needs to learn the distance between the two, if that's even a thing. Uh, I'm not sure. seems like the more we push the button without changing anything, the more things just kind of change on their own. And would we have this issue if I bought a $1,200 gate opener? Maybe, maybe not. But for, again, $600, if we can get it worked out, it's better than 1200. Alrighty, so now she's closing on her own. Let's see if she slows down. She might already be slow. Oh, nope, there it goes. Now it just slowed down. I, had I guess, yeah, I guess maybe it was learning as it goes. So now it's slow to close. And again, we can adjust this time. I don't really know if I want to mess with it now because it's working. Let's see if she stops in the right spot. All right, well now I need to adjust the sensor back a little bit because we want these two buys to be right in the center of the opening. So when she was going full speed, she was like slamming into that side and we don't want that. So now that she slows down before she stops, it's not trying to stop all that momentum of the gate. I think we can adjust these back to where we want it. It's probably gonna have to relearn 50 freaking things now, but let's call that good. And with a push button. All right, we've got a soft start. Don't mind that click. The click was it's just kind of realigning itself. We'll probably adjust that time because if I'm coming in, and your boy's a little lactose intolerant. Sometimes I gotta race to get home, you know, if you know what I'm saying. Slow gate ain't the business. There we go. All right, that's a pretty soft open. Head your bets right now. Is she gonna close in the right spot on the opening? Let's see, we're almost there. Come on, girl, a little bit further. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, that is almost perfect. Let's try to adjust that soft start a little bit though. I think what was confusing me earlier and what I was messing up on is on here, on your switches, down is on instead of up. That, for some reason, I don't know why they did that, but they did that. So these first two, oh, well, I guess it's on right there. I probably should have just read that. Uh, these first two is midway mode. So there's four buttons on this remote. I don't know why, but you use these top two. B, if you hit midway mode, it'll stop again midway, which I think is going to be cool as like a, be able to walk through the gate without it opening all the way. 
However, I don't know with the wireless keypad that you can buy if you can actually program that for different modes. Because if you could program the wireless keypad to be just midway mode, it'd be sweet. If you're walking over here, you just hit the keypad, it goes to midway mode, which is this. You'll see right here. The only problem with midway mode is there's no soft start. Right there, there's midway mode, which is perfect if you want to just walk through the gate to get out to go see the animals, do whatever you're doing. And then it doesn't have to open all the freaking way and close all the freaking way. All righty guys, well, we have adjusted the soft start. Let's see if we can get this to close. There we go, to where it's only one second. So we get full speed all the way, just about to the end and then it slows down. So you'll see now we get soft start, full speed, which opens the gate much quicker than it was opening a second ago. I've reprogrammed, well, I've programmed six remotes to it now. So we're fully all remoted up and ready to go. Look at that, look how much faster it opens now and then it'll slow down right there. Nice, soft start, soft open. I mean, pretty solid setup for getting half the price of like a name brand. We'll see how long she lasts. Uh, we still gotta get the solar setup all done. So the batteries have just arrived, uh, but we're gonna save that because it's kind of looking like it's we're about to get some weather here. All right, guys, we've taken a little field trip over to Sergio's to get the solar system all dialed in. Mainly, I wanted to get an enclosure to put the batteries and stuff in it. Sergio has enclosures in stock and a little, little bit of guidance, you know, make sure we don't blow nothing up, catch anything on fire. I've already gone ahead at the house and I got the entire solar system array bolted together. And from here, you basically daisy chain these together. These are three panels. And then I ordered a couple of lithium batteries on Amazon. These meet the requirements. However, there's a chance I probably should have gone a little bit bigger, but we're gonna find out. It's not like we cycle the gate 100 times a day, so hopefully this is enough. And we've got the solar charge controller and then an enclosure from iep-usa.com. There you go. Well, Sergio has been cranking away. Look at this. Perfect fit right here for the two 12 volt batteries. We've got these wired up in series. So they are 24 volts because that's what it takes to run the system. We've got the three panels. We've got our circuit breaker. We've got our little uh, bus bar and then our solar controller all mounted up nicely into this one container. This is what's going to mount onto the gate. And then from there, Sergio is going to upgrade me to some 10 gauge wire because I kind of want to put this far away from the gate motor in like a visually appealing spot. Sergio's mad at me for that, but- All the way to the, your home or what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here at the shop and we'll run the <laughs> wires all the way to the house. So yeah, hopefully we don't have any issues with running the wires like 30 feet to get to the actual gate motor, but- 20, 20, 30, you know, it's 10 feet between friends, Sergio. I did the calculation for 20, but whatever. Okay, yeah. we'll see. We'll stretch it out a little bit. That's good that we put on circle break. <laughs> Says we're running 30 feet now. <laughs> And that 30 might actually be 40, Sergio, who knows, you know? Come on. <laughs> well guys, we had this all dialed in, everything ready, and I was like, we should probably test this. Uh, even the solar panels, look at that. We've got some wire loom on the back, got that all nice and tidy. We went out, we hooked up the solar panel, put it in the sun, and like the charge controller would blink a little tiny red light there every, I don't know, like 30 seconds it would blink once. And like the directions don't tell you what any of the blinking means. It just says if the light's on, it's charging but does a blink every 30 seconds mean on or does that not mean on? So we didn't really know. So we came back in, we're checking a bunch of stuff. Things weren't just, they weren't adding up voltage wise. And well, it turns out we have a dead battery and a fully charged battery. These are Amazon batteries. It's hit or miss with Amazon batteries, but apparently every once in a while, one of these is showing up to somebody completely dead. And one guy says he was able to get it to take a charge, but then it would deplete within an hour and it just wasn't worth it. So he had to get a replacement sent out. So I'm not even gonna fight trying to charge this thing back up. We're just gonna end up having to get a replacement sent out. Should be able to get one pretty quick. Yeah, not, not even lithium ion batteries like to be completely discharged for a long period of time. So they can go really low, but nobody likes to be like super dead. They should be stored at a certain amount of charge. Yeah, th there's where we're at right now. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Which is nothing. Point zero three. Good news is though, the box is done. We can get it all installed. We can install the solar panels, we can get everything installed, and then we can just plug the battery in when we're ready. There you go. That's, that's, that's the good one. That's, that's what we should be getting on both of them. Story of my life, I should have ordered extra. Alrighty, y'all, we're getting the panels and everything all nice and mounted up. You're technically, like in the description and the way the bracket was, it was to mount the solar panels standing up tall way, so you'd have three panels stacked on top of each other. But uh, we realized that's gonna look kind of funky and it actually looks a little more slim line if we turn them on end. Just drilled a couple of holes in the bracket and uh, made our own little, you know, setup to turn it. 
Uh, got the box mounted up. Again, we're waiting on the, well, actually, the other battery showed up. We just have to go pick it up in town. So we should have this all operating by uh, the end of the day. Now we need to run some conduits. We can run our wire over to the gate motor. And I just so happened to pick up a new laborer. Um, hopefully you guys give him a warm welcome. He's really new around here and he's kind of nervous and kind of shy. And, you know, I'm really trying to break him in. He's got a lot of bad habits he learned. Must, must have been from a previous employer or something. Uh, 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 Der Derek? Is it Derek? Hola. You want to say hi, Derek? Hola. Okay. Hola. All right. Good job, Derek. <laughs> Dude, it's hot out here. What's going on? <laughs> it's a little bit toasty, yeah, man. I don't like this, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek is back. Yeah, I left a nice cold Florida. I never thought I'd be saying that for this. It's too hot out here. I don't like this at all. Hey, at least we're building some character, you know? Sure, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Derek's getting our trench dug so we can run some conduits around the wire from there all the way to here. My original plan was I really wanted to throw that solar panel like way the heck over there uh, on that corner, but I guess it's probably better we don't run 60 feet of wire and we only run 25. I'll save you money in the long run, for sure. We got a couple of spools of wire here from Sergio, all 10 gauge that we're gonna be running. Set these over here on the golf cart. <clears throat> Daddy, you want, you want the roto hammer now? Yeah. Daddy was so gung ho about digging with a pick. I'm like, yeah, we use roto hammer. Dude, it went great the first like foot. <laughs> And then now you're over it. Yeah. Y'all, I went out, I was going to check on my new hire to see how he's doing. And then the trench was like kind of done, but oh, stopped like a foot short. And it, look at this guy's already developed a gambling habit. Okay. Okay. We're going to hit on that too. He's getting ready for That's Vegas. You, you, you going to be ready? Oh, dog with that. We got to go grab some supplies. We're going to run to Home Depot. We're going to go pick up the battery and all that stuff. We'll be back in a second. All righty guys, we are back at the ranch. We've gotten all the parts. We've got the replacement battery. Hopefully this one works because I don't really have a voltmeter out here to test it. Uh, we've got everything pretty much hooked up. The box is on. We've got one of the Liquitite connectors coming out of the back. That is then going to get attached to that four by right there. Goes into the ground. Conduit takes it over to where Dedek is at. We then use another flex, whatever Liquitite whip you want to call that. That's gonna go into the side of the box. However, unfortunately, we don't have another one of these 90 degree uh, little Liquitite fittings. So we're just gonna wire it up without that for right now. And then later we just unhook these two wires, put them in. Now, if you remember back at Sergio's shop, when we hooked this up, ugh, I just got hit the head. That little light was blinking. Well, she's now steady on now that we have her all wired up. So I'm assuming that now means we've got a good battery and they are currently charging. We barely have any solar. I'm actually, we're in full exposure right now. We're actually looking pretty good. The side looks really clean. Pretty happy with how this turned out again. We're gonna clamp that to that in a second. Dedix jerry-rigging a little bit over there until we get that right connector, but we mainly just want to see this work for the video. I think it's been like seven days of this video. It's too many days. Classic Ryan, you know, I want to take a video before the work's done, you know, over here, me having to, you know, do all the work in the background, you know. Jeez. <laughs> Who do I send that uh, Vegas hotel bill to on your your end there, dog? Boy, <laughs> <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it, boss, I got it, boss. Okay. <laughs> All right, Daddy, disconnect her from life support. We'll see if she can run on her own now. We're taking away the 120 power. I'm gonna go hit the circuit breaker over here. We're gonna see if Dedek wired this up properly or if we're just gonna blow this thing up. In which case, you'll have to stay for an extra couple of months working here to pay that off. All right, so we got our little circuit breaker here. You ready, Dedek? I'll get all the tools out of the way, yeah. There right, we go. Oh, I heard a beep down there. Nothing blew up. All right, all right, let's see. Is she gonna work? Look at that. Uh, one gate down, like six more to go. She lives on her own, Dedek. We did it. Dude, it looks a little hooky right there, but we'll get that, we'll get that cleaned We're up. missing one connector. Yeah. With, you know, with only one Home Depot trip that I've been on so far. That's not bad. That's it's not, not bad. bad. There are very few Home Depot trips in this project. All righty, y'all. Well, I think it's a pretty successful project. All we have to do now is a little, little touch-up paint down there, and we will be good to go. Me and Dedek, we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of running around to do. We've got SEMA. We've only got a couple days. We're going to pull it off? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, right. All the confidence in the world. <laughs> okay. Are you you know if I'm in hard thought. Were you confident in that yes, part? absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> More confident in SEMA than it was in that part. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you know us out of the... Darn, you ruined that whole thing. Yeah. Just, just, just click the subscribe button. Also, check out Workforce Apparel. Look at it, look at it. You can get a beautiful hoodie like that guy. My favorite hoodie right here. Yeah, okay. we, got, we got these new, we got these new shirts. We got these new hats. Right look, at these, look at these new hats. Yeah. So, something, something, something like that. You guys are the best. Yeah, roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.
Yeah. Uh.